look at is to um, we focus more on women and youth and we empower them and build skills. Okay, um, so we're also going to look at um, helping them to do more research as the um, doctor represented was saying. That's, that's our main focus and I believe as the program goes on, we'll be sharing more insights. Thank you. Okay, I think I've introduced think I've myself already. already. My name is Rudy from OP Foundation West Africa. We are also into building digital skills on the continent of Africa in terms of open knowledge, open education. These are the things that are going on on the continent. Hi everyone, my name is Afi. I'm here representing Streets Ghana, Open Streets Map Ghana, sorry. Open Streets Map is an initiative that creates and provides geological information for you to use. So it supports the initiative of open data. Yes. Okay, uh, so I'll start off with a question and uh, this one goes to all panelists and I would give each panelist uh, two minutes to address it. So I would read the question. It says, as women and climate enthusiasts, can you share from personal experience on how gender can be mainstreamed into climate change discussions? I'll take it again. As women and climate enthusiasts, can you share from personal experience how gender can be mainstreamed into climate change discussions? So again, I'll take it from Miss Gentle. I'm sorry, please uh, correct me how to pronounce Is it Gentle? Gentle. Okay, correct now. Gentle. All right, so Miss Gentle can start. Thank you very much. Incorporating gender perspective into any action, policy, legal or campaign is crucial to ensure that the concerns of everyone is taken into account. On the surface, it seems that climate change affects everyone equally, but that is not the case. In instance where climate situations intensify, women take on more roles to take care of the victims in their household and in their communities. In so doing, they may neglect their, their self-development, uh, they, they may neglect uh, their self-development. So to normalize the fact that climate change impacts both men and women different, differently, we need to first of all involve men and women equally at the decision table of climate change policies. And a research by the UNDP on climate change says that one third of women worldwide are involved in agricultural employment. They are employed in agricultural uh, the sector. And then, but then only 12.6% of them are landowners. And it's also sad to know that only 10% of this number, only 10% of this uh, in relation to, when it comes to agricultural aid for women, women receive only 10% of this. This aid may include access to information on how women can adapt to new technology and weather forecasts for their farms. So in incorporating gender related perspectives or in strategizing how we can include uh, climate change into gender, we need to take into consideration the various needs, the various capacities of both men and women into consideration. This it may include various gender disparities, access to resources, opportunities, and the, uh, the, the and policy. Thank you. Uh, so the best person. Yes, I need to offer it. Okay, so with the with the issue of climate change, as she rightly said, it's, um, it varies. You may think um, climate change affects both men and women equally, but no, it doesn't. Women are very, very vulnerable. Okay, so um, we want to look at even uh, poverty and limited education is actually one area you can look at. If Let me just give an, ex an, ex 
um, my experience, okay, I think we are speaking a lot of English, so you let's come home. If you go back in your homes, or me, when I was very young, any time the tap wasn't flowing, we needed to go and fetch water. It's the woman. And I'll carry a little bucket or a small bucket along and carry it on my head and we'll bring it home. The men will just be home. And if they have to bath, we have to go and fetch the water and bring it to the men to bath. Is it a crime for a man to equally do that? No. And we carry this on our head. At the end of the day, you get headaches. Or you don't get headaches. You get headaches. You get body pains. Our health is what is impacted. You see, so when it comes to climate change and it's, um, you know, yeah, women are very, very vulnerable. Now you want to look at a girl child education. I, I can't remember when we were young, there was a project, I don't, I, I'm sure most of you remember all you. It goes like, send your girl child to school, mama send her to school. You know, there was a point that they, they were advocating for girls to be in school because a lot of girls were not in school. And not even today, if they take, I haven't done, I don't have my numbers here, so I will not want to give a research based on that. You realize that still there's a huge gap, which is gender inequality. Now the men end up have going to school, having edu been educated, they're able to fight for themselves, but the women, we are not empowered. We are not empowered. So they even take you to a place where you can't even speak for yourself because you don't have that exposure. In fact, if they have not called a woman to moderate, I would say it's an error. Because even right here, the man who was moderating right from the beginning, where is the opportunity for the woman? You cannot find it. So women need to be empowered. We need to be given the opportunity to explore. When it comes to businesses, see how many, most of the businesses in Ghana are run by men. Okay? And most big businesses right here in this country get support from most of the financial institutions. You go to a woman, it's like they don't believe in the woman. It's now that some of these um, educational awareness is coming up, so you realize that some organizations you know, are now pushing for women. I come from an organization that is doing one, but as I'm sitting here, I'm not wearing the shoes of the organization, so I cannot promote it. So you realize that the, it, it creates even poverty. The woman doesn't have the money. And money is power. You are in an area where it's flooded. Because you're the woman, you don't have money. The house, did you see that of Voltaire J? The video that was showed. You don't have the money to move, to go and rent an apartment. Especially when you are married, you need to take authority from a man. And the man says, no, what will you do? You can't do anything. You stay. You have to be in that building. Who suffers? Your children suffer. Now, a woman, you are a caregiver. You, you, you have to take care of your children in terms of the food they eat. You need to, you know, take care of all of that. We spend so much time. And at the end of the day, it goes a long way to affect women. If some of these responsibilities are shared equally, what do you think will happen? There will be a significant improvement. I'm not surprised in some resting part of um, in the Western country, you go to North America, you go to the European country, they are more advanced than us. And Africa, climate change is, I don't know, I think we suffer more. Un un unless, you know, you tell me that we do not. Because some of, most of them, is like the responsibility is shared. But when it comes to Africa, we have this cultural um, restrictions. It's a spot in the woman's mind that the man is your head. It is true, I'm married. The man is your head. But the man cannot determine your life. I'm not saying it in the wrong context, but don't respect your man. No. The man has a right to live. You, the woman, you have a right to live. And you are responsible for your life. At the end of the day, if you are sick, you are sick. You are the only one who will bear that pain. Okay? So sustainability, climate change, everything starts with us. Pardon me. Everything starts with us. So we need to be very determined. We need to be very intentional as women. We should not just, you know, be taking, you know, 
you, you don't have to limit our mindset. That kind of mindset is racist, and we need to erase it quickly. Let's empower ourselves. Anything a man can do, a woman can do it better. Even in a very old parent, you have a boy and a girl. You know what you do? You buy a tablet or a computer for the boy, or a computer game for the boy, and you buy a doll, baby in car for a um, teddy bear for the girl. Yes, how does the girl get to learn technology right from the home? So she gets, she grows, and she's not empowered. She is, she is afraid to use it. So in that area, there is a gap. You go to IT departments in various organizations. How many women do you see there? It's narrow. Okay. And all these things are all around us. And we think climate change is far. Climate change is sitting next to us. So we need to, you know, rise up. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Oferi. I think you even went on to answer the next question, but thank you. <laughs> okay, Ms. Brown. Okay, um, I think my two ladies here have said a lot about how women are being impacted uh, by climate, climate change and all has to do with adaptation strategies because we are talking about technology and today we know that technology is helping us to solve uh, problems. If you look at climate change today, you realize that women are disproportionately affected. And let me talk about uh, Wikimedia space. When you come to the Wikimedia space, like, we see the same problem. So every event that we host, you realize that 90% are men. Where are the women? They will tell you that they are cooking at home, or they have to take care of their little kids or sisters. And so they cannot attend a basic training, which is happening on Saturdays. If you told your mom that you're going for a Wikipedia training on Saturday, what your mom will say that, I know you are going to go. Tell me, and I have experienced the same thing. Today we are preparing soup, today we are preparing this from that and that. And I'm a mother of two, and I understand. Because when I started having children, children, I realized that it's no joke to have kids and still be running about. You don't have your life, okay? So women tend to be affected. They don't go for these opportunities. And that's why when you look at the Wikimedia space, 90% of contributors on Wikipedia are male. And that tells us that the information that is being represented on this global platform that everybody is, is not a reflection of what the population is. It's a reflection of a certain group of people. And that is what we are talking about, the bias that is happening on the internet. Because if, we, if all the men are empowered to contribute to climate change on this global platform, that means that they are going to share their story or their perspective about climate change on Wikipedia. And we will be missing the perspective and the experiences of climate change of our women. But we are saying that climate change cannot be solved without including women's voices, without including 100% of the voices of the population. And we are missing more than, I don't know, like, we have just 10% or 9% of these voices online. So this is what we are saying. Technology is a very powerful tool. The internet is currency. The internet is power. And so we need to be able to bring women in this space as much as possible. And that's why in the Wikimedia space, we are trying hard to be able to support women. So we have this, um, sometimes for events, we have this childcare support and all of that because we understand that even women start having children or have kids that they need to take care, of, take care of, they need to be able to pay. Because if I have to leave my kids with a nanny, I need to pay the nanny before I can go anywhere. Okay, and this is an extra cost that comes with it. If I don't have the money, I'm not going anywhere. And so women are not empowered, they don't have money. You look at the jobs in the market. More women are going for more of the care jobs, jobs that don't pay because we are not getting the skills. All the men are taking the developer jobs that are earning millions of um, dollars, millions of cities. And so they have the money to do whatever they want. And when it comes over, we don't have the money. So I think it's high time women empower themselves. We take up action to be able to also mitigate some of the, the challenges that we face when it comes to climate change. Thank you. Um, yeah, just circling back to what you asked, you asked about how um, gender could be mainstream in climate discussions, right? 
Yeah, so looking, listening to what my fellow have said, it's very true about women being in these spaces, having their voices heard. I believe through ways like capacity building, you see, we have like events to sort of help women understand what's going on, the climate discussions, there are workshops, there are talks, there are so many events. So if we, get, if we could get women into like those capacity building programs, I think that would be a great way, right, of bringing that inclusivity when it comes to gender, like mainstreaming in the climate discussion. Aside that, I also think there are certain policies and um, gender responsive budgets that are made in certain sectors. For, for instance, for me, I may be biased because I'm coming from like the tech side because I'm a software engineer, but um, most times you see that certain people actually go saying they put certain budgets for women because they know that, oh, like there's a possibility that this woman may have a kid and when you have a kid, you need a nanny or there's certain responsibilities as a woman that we have to carry out. So in order to sort of make it possible to make women be available at the event, they make provision for that. So if there was more life thrown on gender responsive budgeting, right, capacity building, probably more inclusion. For instance, this weekend green conference, right, I can see like women being represented here, but I'm not sure. I don't see like equal numbers. The ratio is crazy. At work, it's the same thing. As a senior software engineer on the back end, the ratio is like one to seven. Like I've held that role. Like there's so many guys in the room. Yeah, the only woman. I think last year, where's Joyce? Joyce and was it Jesse? We had this event at Bolingo Spaces, and there were a lot of women who signed up in their sheets, right? But we got there and realized that they didn't show up. So I was the only woman in the picture, and there were like 10 guys, and I was sitting in the middle of them like this. like, And this is a, a program that was sponsored. There was scholarships being given, transportation being given, all that. So why aren't the women showing up? It boils down to more of society, culture, responsibilities. People have things going on, right? So if we promote that, I'm sure they'll want to help on board it. They'll be in for long. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I actually want to add up. I'm a woman myself here, so let me also add up. I think they've all talked about very tangible points. Uh, personally, coming from the Open Street Map and Youth Mapper's background, I can give a scenario. So when we are mapping, we normally map buildings, POIs, very important POIs, roads, waterways and stuff. But um, an opportunity was given to a chapter that was purely women. They asked them, what do you want to map? They said they wanted to map uh, spaces where they felt safe, spaces where there was security, spaces where there were lightning. Otherwise, the map would have been purely, oh, this is a building mapped, this is a road mapped. But they went a step further, including their perspective. So I believe, as it says, we are talking about climate change, including perspectives of women who are part of the vulnerable populations who are highly affected by the issues of climate change. They will actually be able to pinpoint the issues that affect them, should in case they are affected by climate change. And that way, when we are mitigating, we ensure that focus falls on these particular issues to address them. So yes, that's my pick anyways. Also, so I'll move to the next question. Thank you so much for the first answers you guys gave. Uh, so this question goes to two of you. Uh, Miss uh, Jen, Jen Tu with Let's Do It Ghana and Miss Anito Furry. This is to you guys. And I'll state it again, please, this time, two minutes. Two minutes. If you ask, it's two minutes, I'll say thank you. And then next. Okay. So the question is, how does climate change impact women? How does climate change impact women? Ms. Jen, to your first. Uh, thank you so much. Climate change impacts women in various ways, which is often uh, disproportionate compared to men. In situations where climate change intensifies, the workload of women intensify as well. For instance, in the northern part of Ghana, where the land is mostly dry, women take on the responsibility to travel far for water, for drinking, for washing, for cooking, and most of the times they go along with their children. And then in such situations as well, women take on the responsibility to take care of the elderly, the sick people, as well as the victims and 
their household and communities. So moreover, climate change impacts the health of uh, women and pregnant women are particularly vulnerable. In situations where there's uh, earthquake, for instance, pregnant women are more vulnerable in terms of their safety and uh, they have less access to health centers and which as a result may expose them to diseases, to infections, and even death. When we go on, climate change affects women as well in terms of food security. Like I said earlier, one third of women are employed in the agricultural sector. Now when climate change intensifies and the land became, becomes so dry, women are forced to seek for food. They are forced to seek for water, to water their plants and all sorts. So in that case, it affects how women bring food home. It affects how women bring food to the household, how they are able to provide food to sell to the market, to provide food to cook for their family and all sorts. Climate change also affects uh, also displaces uh, women and children. So, like someone said, when climate change intensifies, for example, the, the, the video we watched, we saw that examples like the tidal waves, women are forced or with their children to relocate to other areas where they can find safety, where they can find food and shelter and all sorts. And lastly, climate change impacts women in terms of gender-based violence. So when climate change affects women, it causes situations where resources become scarce. In these situations, there's a competition between men and women for these resources. Now, that uh, does this situation create an environment where, create a tense environment where women are more susceptible to gender-based violence. Right. Thank you. Ms. Ofori. So as for me, I've said it all, and I'd like to save time. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. OK, so uh, the next question goes to Ms. A Ms. Badawo of OSM Ghana and Ms. Brown. Uh, so your question is, what are some major challenges facing women in the open movement space owing to the fact that there are few women in the space? I'll take it again. What are some major challenges facing women in the open movement space owing to the fact that there are few women in the space? Two minutes each. Okay, so with the term open movement, it sort of revolves around open data, I mean tech, and like open access to education, like open source software, I mean, and all those things. And one of the main things that affects women when it comes to these things are like we are unrepresented. I think I mentioned before that when you go to most like boards, in open data, maybe like open source, open anything open, you see that the ratio of men to women is not proportionate. It's not even like two is to six or three is to six. It's more one is to six or seven or eight or nine. You see, so we are unrepresented. Aside that, we also have this stereotype or gender bias, right? Where it looks as if women, because it's been a boys' club for so long. When a woman comes in, there's so much pressure. Yo, there's so much pressure because, see, they'll put it to like so high standards, I and mean, which is good on some parts, and you have to live up to it. But sometimes too, it can really create a lot of imposter syndrome. Aside that, it also has um, there are other challenges with more of inclusivity because we have to make sure women's voices are heard, our views are seen, and all that when it comes to this space. So those are examples. Thank you. Yeah, I think um, just to add to what Aki is saying, it's very true. When you come to the space, and I've talked about statistics on experiences that we have in the open space, how women are not represented, and it's due to a lot of underlying factors. And now I would like to share an experience. Some years ago, 
um, we were doing some research with Population Council in the Central Region, and we were doing a research about teenage marriages and why like young kids have have children. And until now, now I'm able to understand the, the reason why that was happening. Because when we were talking to the women, most of them are farmers, and their farms were not working, and so it deepened um, the hardships that they are having. And they would want their kids to go out there to bring money. And how did the kids bring money? They are after men. And when we talk to these women, they get some sort of money from the men, and the men also want you know, that kind of service to be given to them and that leads them to having kids and all of that. And this terminates their education because they're not able to move on with their education. They're not able to, able to get skills that they want. And they have to be forced to marry these men because once you have a child with them, you have to marry them. And if you look at global, we have about 650 million of people are married before age 18, 26% of um even in ghana five one in five girls are married before um they are between age 18 and 23 which is very terrible and that tells us that women are not getting there this is the challenge we are facing okay we are not getting there because of some of these underlying factors we are getting married early because of hardships that are maybe our families are going through they want to just give us off quickly to men so that they would have their peace of mind because taking care of kids is difficult and i am a parent and i know what i'm talking about like to be feeding someone taking care of them and all of that so your parents want to give you off quickly and that will deprive you because you are, your mind is hot and anyone whose mind is hot is not going for education yeah like your whole life become messed up and this is happening most of the time for women because if the man who impregnates you, you know, it doesn't terminate his progress to go to school. You will not go to school because you have a child and you need to take care of the child. Are you understanding the underlying factors? So we are not expecting women to get to that level where they can be educated, get that digital skills. You are a developer. How many women get to, to be developers? Okay, get to acquire that kind of level of education. How many women are getting to the university? Because Marriages are, are shortcutting them. Um, Childbirth is shortcutting their their vision, and all of this is impacting the representation that we are having on the in terms of having contributors or participation of women in the digital space. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Yes, please. please. Okay, so I'm actually learning a lot from policy making to the homes, to education, to the workspaces to get the women involved. We need to get their perspectives addressed. We, we actually need to take a look through their eyes, how they are looking through, uh, how they are looking to uh, climate issues and even ordinary issues in the various uh, fields we find ourselves in. So there's a last question for all my panelists. Uh, it's how can we harness the interest of young ladies to contribute to Wikipedia and other Wikimedia projects? I'll take it again. How can we harness the interest of young ladies to contribute to Wikipedia and other Wikimedia projects? So this time I'll start from over there. Um, so I think a great way will be more of outreach, but the truth is it's already been done. You have so many publications going out. Okay, so for instance, I remember last year I shared the Wiki 101 with a couple of friends. We all agreed to go, but and then I was the only one who went. Did you get it? So outreach has already been done, probably a more intense form maybe could work i don't know but so far the outreach is there they are, there's so much publication about events and all going out i said that there could be active participation or involvement of communities right for, for instance today we have different communities being represented here right that's also another way of like making sure that we are winning. okay just to add to what afi said um it's very important to bring um, the youth in the space and I say this passionately 
anytime I do an event, I try to seek feedback. And I realize from all the feedback that I'm gathering that in as much as we are doing publicity, it's not really reaching out there. There are still a lot of people who do not know that they can write on Wikipedia. And I'm telling you for a fact, anytime I do an event, I ask for feedback. And I'm seeing that a lot of people don't know that they can write on Wikipedia. And a lot of people have misconception about what Wikipedia platform is just because of what we were told by our teachers. And for me, I'll use myself as an example. Until 2019, I never knew I could write on Wikipedia. All I knew was that I could use Wikipedia. And I say this passionately because I was like, a Wikipedia existed long ago, how come I didn't know that I could actually be empowered to tell my story, to write the things that I'm passionate about, to be able to provide that kind of information that will be impactful in our global world. And until 2019, I didn't know that. And, that, and it tells me that there's a lot of work that we need to do. Apart from advocacy, we need to build skills. And the youth do not know how to do the things that we are asking them to do. Then now we're telling them, right, so Wikipedia, Wikipedia is good. How are we getting them into the space? And so it's very important that we take skill building seriously. And it's not a rush. When I got into the Wikimedia, so it took me like a whole year to understand like what is happening. Because I was like, what, what, is, what is this? And the next day I'm hearing Wikimedia Commons. The next day I'm hearing Wikidata. I'm hearing all these platforms. Like, it's, and there became so many, and I was overwhelmed. I was like, what? Until someone told me, find one platform that you are interested in. Don't think about every topic. Find a topic that you are interested in and focus on that. So if each and every one of us will focus on the little things that we are interested in, don't you think that we will bridge the knowledge gap that we've always been fighting to bridge about Africa? So this is what I will say. We need to bring the youth in, in the topics that are most pressing to them. The topics that are most vital to the youth, the youth are looking to do something. Whenever there's a climate um, conversation, we see a lot of the youth. So if the youth are interested to fight climate action, then we need to bring them in to tell those stories. We need to empower them to be able to bridge those knowledge gap online. And that's, that, that, that's the only way I think we can, we can do to bring the youth. And we also need to support them because the youth are not... People who are, like a lot of the youth are not employed, most of them are in school and all of that. So how do we support them to get into these spaces to be able to do that? And this is something that we need to really look at if we want to bring the youth on board. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, so how do we get um, the youth to be very practical? Um, I know creating awareness is ongoing, but the thing is, um, I think people do not pay attention. So you become intentional about something, that's when you get to know the benefits. What I would say we have to do, we have to reach out to lots of schools, we have to partner them. Let's um, educate these young ones, you know. Some one of my was like, hey, Ghana, be a year. And no, the person told me that, Aji, you to 35 years. And so, more 35 years and below, we leave them. That's when Ghana will change. And I was like, they know who? You know, so we need the youth, they are the drivers, okay? We need them. Partner with the schools, we do schools to schools, talk to them, create more awareness. Once the change comes from there, we're going to see a significant change from, you know, from their time and things, I think things will become different. So that's what I'll say. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think my colleagues have said a lot. I just want to emphasize that Wikipedia can uh, continue to promote diverse views, uh, to encourage young ladies out there, like the representation we have here. It can also uh, bring together uh, um, experts, female um, editors, so they can train young ladies about the contribution they can make on Wikipedia. They can highlight the works that these women are doing. Now, when the, uh, young ladies are exposed to these women, they'll be encouraged to also contribute to the impact that Wikipedia is doing. Thank you. Hello? They said a lot 
they've, they are always saying a lot in every question I ask anyways. So uh, one thing that kept ringing in my mind as we kept talking is I do interact a lot with the youth. And one thing I've discovered is the youth are hungry, like they are very hungry. Like unless you don't ask a question or you give them that platform to ask questions, like people can start asking you questions for one hour because they just want to know, how can I do this? I want to be this. How do I do it? How, how do I get there? And personally for me, uh, uh, the, in my journey as uh, a geographer and a mapper, I've always asked questions and most of the people that have mentored me have been men. And so this is a call to, a call to uh, do we say a call of action or call to action? It's to all of us. We've got young uh, girls and boys around us. It doesn't have to come from an, a big organization or an entity or someone. We can do it ourselves. We've got people here, you are knowledgeable in a particular field. You've got people around you, young people, your siblings, your friends, your cousins, even strangers in schools. You've got these people around you. We could take that call to action up ourselves and actually be able to guide them on the path that they want to be, especially in the field of climate and in contributing. So at this point, I would give uh, each panelist two minutes. I know it will come from my head, but I'll give everyone two minutes to just give us your final words, whatever you want to share with us, so we can add your, your takeaway messages. So I'll start from Ms. Jen, you have the mic, and then we go from Thank right you. Left. Uh, we've said a lot, like you said. Um, addressing, uh, climate, addressing climate considerations is crucial to ensure that the various voices of everyone is conceded. I think that we can achieve a successful climate change uh, change when we, by educating women, empowering them, as well as granting them the resources they need. Thank you so much. Okay, so what I'll say is that um, let's, let's be very intentional about the things we do and let's not take it lightly. As women, let's, let's challenge ourselves because I believe we can do more. Even as I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm really, I'm working, you know, I'm working and I'm still here. We can combine things, we can multitask. So let's not be afraid and let's take a, a green pledge and let's say that I pledge to live a sustainable life. Please let's say it together. I pledge to live a sustainable life. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think we've all learned so much. And my only words that I'll leave with you is every voice is important for soul and climate change. Your voice, the voice of the youth, the voice of women, everyone voice is very important. Everyone's story is very important. Everyone's experience is very important. We don't have much research, but we have a very good platform that we can be able to do that documentation on, and that is Wikipedia and its sister project. Let's take advantage of these projects and let's tell our story. It can be in the form of video. It can be in the story of storytelling. It can be in the form of documentation. Thankfully, we have the media publishing these stories, the happenings about climate impact in the various communities. These publications can be used to document stories on Wikipedia, and that's the whole point, because we are not waiting for anyone to come and do research for us. It's going to take a long time. Just 4% of global research funds are dedicated to Africa topic, not to even talk about just women. So we have an opportunity in this platform because when you look at climate change, um, there are about um, 3,000 articles that were identified as climate change topics on English Wikipedia. And these topics had more than about 233 uh, million page views. And that tells you that people are going online seeking for climate information. And you and I have the opportunity to tell that story, to do that documentation on this global platform, to make that information accessible. So that even if the people are going to fund climate change, they can see that, oh, this is how climate change is affecting the people of Ghana or Ghanaian women. And they are funding somewhere that they want to fund, but because they are not seeing anything, they think that, oh, Ghanaian women are okay. So please, let's take advantage of this and let's 
um, methods that to bring more opportunity into our communities and countries. Thank you. Um, to conclude, we've heard so many things. I would just like to say that by we engaging and actively amplifying our voices to be heard, we'll be able to represent each other. Every single body, like every single person counts because if we leave it for others to represent us, we'll be re represented wrongly because the experiences I have, as well as I say, well Ruby will have, as well as I say, well confidence will have. So I think we should all be very proactive. We've talked so much, but it's really nothing if you don't do anything, right? What are the next steps are going to take from this? What's a, what's a practical thing you do after this? Are you getting ready to go and register for the other sister conference in Tamale and go and sit down and listen? Or you are going to take practical steps to make sure that your voices are being heard, you are contributing to Wikipedia. There are so many contests that offer organizers, other wiki um, hubs and the rest they organize, you have to get involved, make your mark be known, like you should leave a digital, like, or even a footprint. Your, your life has to matter, like, you have to be represented. There was this AI study done years ago where they realized that when they were like getting the facial recognition of like people generally, they didn't test it on blacks because for data sets on blacks there were none, so it was white people. So you could go and then into scanning and you realize that you are not identified, even though you are a human being, just because there was lack of data for black people. So you have to represent yourself, like you have to stand up. So please do that. And the women try and be in spaces so that we'll not just be one one. Like, I thought maybe the front seat, I'll see like more women, this climate thing, be very proactive about it. Like there's so many initiatives, even from offer, try and contribute, write articles, do something. Okay, thank you. I want to ask you that to be able to be successful in the Wikimedia space, join the community, okay, and go. It doesn't take one day. So those of you who are looking to just kill your soul on one article with Please, it doesn't happen like just, just relax and take your time. Join a community, find friends who are in that space and learn. There are so many communities in Ghana. We have the Wiki, uh, Open Foundation is one of them, Wikimedia Ghana, the Bani group, and the other language groups that are in Ghana. So if you're interested to join any of those groups, looking at your passion, you're welcome to join. It's open and it's free. You don't need to pay anything to join any of these communities. So we're looking forward to having you all on board so that you take advantage of the various opportunities that we give to our community members. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please let's do better. I think we've got some information from them. Thank you so much, panelists. Uh, this has been a very insightful discussion. I think I, I personally, I have got a lot of message I'm taking away. I pledge to be sustainable. I'm going to represent myself. I'll make sure that I join a community. Yeah, I got a lot. Uh, um, Mr. Otsuo, with your permission, people have questions. Thank you. So, hallelujah. We've got 10 minutes for questions. So if you've got a question, please raise your hand. Hello, uh, my name is Emmanuel Nija and Ashley, um, the SRC president for the University of Energy and Natural Resources, the one campus um, project, um, open green project assistant and um, project coordinator for um, Planet Earth um, Positive Alliance, and also the um, founder for Global Climate Change Resolution. Um, we are into, we are focusing on the three pillars in sustainability or sustainable development. That's economics, um, the environment, and the society. Um, um, mine is a contribution. Talking about climate change, I'm also studying climate change in my final year, climate change and sustainable development. So talking about climate change, the impact is affecting all aspects of lives, leaving no one behind. Now, when I'm talking about vulnerability, um, in Ghana, we are crying so much all the time. I've been to several conferences and when it gets to gender, always women are crying that they are suffering. And what's making them suffer? What's the vulnerability there? You know, um, the world was built on the shoulders of men. Let's not forget that. And for women to run that race with men, they need to scale up. They need to empower themselves. 
Um, as a matter of fact, um, one of our um, panelists was saying that, that there was a program that was meant for men to be there, but at the end, it was only here that represented. When I was aspiring for ex the president, I went purposely for a female vice, not knowing other females somewhere were against a female who is aspiring for a position. So what we have to start working on is to change the narrative in the society. You know, we came from different backgrounds where there are a lot of narratives that women don't do this, women don't do that, that kind of entitlement, everything men should do. That is what we should focus on, changing the narrative in the society. Well, in the society, women, most women are well to do, they are working very hard. But let's look at the villages. That's when most of these women are vulnerable. That is where we need to focus much on. U.S. currently is investing so much into LGBTQ. They are doing it right from basic school, investing so much there. But what is Ghana doing? We are just sitting here, always talking. Then don't push their agenda here, they are the end. We start fighting back. So what do we have to do? And in a fight in climate change, it's about innovation. Climate change has opened a lot of avenue for us. Now, um, with the cost of vulnerability, money is also a, a, a solution to all these our problems. Because if there's money, we will all be sleeping. Because of this lack of money in the system, we are all crying. So we should be innovative in all our, 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 our dealings or in everything we are doing. If you are not innovative, then it means you cannot catch up with the world that is coming. And very soon, in the next five years, we are not going to use digital, uh, sorry, um, paper and um, coin currencies anymore. We are going to deal with digital currencies. And it has started. And if I should ask in this room, how many women are, are exposed or know about digital currency? How many? A few, but when we ask the, the guys, how many people know about digital currency, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, and the others? A lot of guys would raise their hands. So nobody is depriving women of their rights. They're just that they are relaxed. Sorry, not they, most are relaxed in this. So it's about time we need to start educating right from childhood. We need to change the mindset, going to schools as yeah, we stated earlier. We need to go to schools and change that mindset. Otherwise, we'll sit here and someone will cook some stories, some will bring it to Africa, besides Ghana, and they'll start polluting the children. So we need to champion that action, changing the mindset right from childhood. Then Ghana and Africa as expected. Thank you. Thank you, Eva. I beg to differ. Women, we are not relaxed at all. All we need is opportunity. Let me tell you, discrimination starts right from the house. Who? When you are a child, they'll buy you a game and they'll buy the lady and something else. So you get to know or you like technology. Look, a, a boy baby will like to fidget things than a girl because they, they don't buy it for the girl. You, you are following your mother to go and cook, to go and do this. So since you know about climate change, I know your mindset is different, and your generations to come, their mindsets will be different. It's education, okay? So I'm not putting you, but women, we are not relaxed. All we need is opportunity, and we'll try. Thank you. Um, I, I, I want to say a story. When I, there was a funeral that happened, um, one of my uncle passed by, and in that funeral, like, it, it's not a funeral, it was a gathering. Like, before you have a funeral, there's a gathering. And the chief stood there, and then he called some men from the garden. All the men that stood up, they said they're going to have some decision and they will come back. All the men that stood up to do, to, to, all the people that stood up for that decision meeting were men. Until a woman is asked to speak, you dare not speak. And that is the culture that we are living in. That is the discrimination that we are talking about, okay? so. It's not that women cannot speak, or women do not have a voice, or women cannot do anything. But are they given the opportunity? If you're in our homes, if a man eats, naturally the women are supposed to go and gather the plates and wash. Okay, so that productive time, that could have been used to learn something productive. The guy maybe is going back to learn 
something. The woman is in the kitchen trying to clean up, trying to cook, always spending time doing things that are not really going to build skills or maybe home skills, but beyond that, okay? So that's why you will always get the opportunity because you have been given that liberty to be here. Nobody's asking you to cook soup. Nobody's asking you, are just saying, go, 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 you know? And the woman, they'll say, oh, Today you went here, why are you wear again? Today you like there's so much demands of of us in the house. So it's it's we need to rather work on our cultural perceptions and give more opportunity consciously to women, like equal opportunities to both men and women so that we can all um, work together. I know it's a lot of issues, but let's see how we can work together to um, promote that's another question. Um, yeah, um, just to highlight what you said, right, you made a statement that when, like, the the future or what we have now was built on the backs of men, and I quite disagree to that because there have been women who have been influential, not even in the science space, but generally, even right from, not even letting me bring religion in, but there are women always who have played key roles, which you may not see, or may, which you may not yeah, exactly. To be, be privy to, right? Yeah, so you can't just make that generalization. Also, I agree with my other fellow panelists as we're saying some women, most cultural backgrounds, you have to go to the kitchen. It's not even up for debate. Please, you have to know how to. Yeah, it's not up for debate. You, you can't go and be now arguing with your grandfather that you're not going to cook, you're not going to. Some, some of our some backgrounds were quite lenient. So maybe. As you are growing up, you get to SHS. My mom realized that me, the cooking, I could do, but it's not what I really want. I don't really want to spend my whole day in the kitchen. So when I come on vacation, it's rather my brother who will be close with my mom cooking. And then maybe on some days when I feel like I do it, you see. So that's what gave me the liberty to explore the things that I really wanted. So it's not equal like that. It's not flat out. Some people don't get the opportunity to do the things that they want to do, explore. I'm sure the reason why um, most women don't know about Bitcoin, I don't know, I only saw one hand up in the corner, right? But probably the other women who know about Bitcoin, but they are shy. Women, we don't have certain, yeah, I'm sure there are women who have heard of Bitcoin crypto, but they are shy. So you just can't put it out there that, yeah, uh, um, uh, how many women know about crypto? If you've heard about Bitcoin before, just raise your hand. Exactly. Look at there are more numbers now. We, exactly. Women. Women. Have, ex, exact, women are not exactly like men. For the joint space, right? In tech, because I, I can speak from tech, you have most of the men going for jobs. They'll just have one skill, though, out of the ten skills. The boys will job you and they'll get a job. But the woman will have eight out of ten skills, but she will still not apply because she feels like she's not got ten over ten skills. But a guy with just one skill, let's say PHP or Java, you just apply and then you you get in. Then you go and learn on the job. So it's more about we women like we changing yeah, changing the way we think, right? And probably do more capacity building, like just encouragement through groups, empowering and all that. But I don't believe women have so much to offer. We are not relaxed at all. Let me tell you, we are not relaxed. We are not relaxed. So yeah. <laughs> Hello. Yes. I am Michael. Michael from Kufuria Technical University. Katie. Um. Wait. What you were saying? Yes. Like my kid says, I wanted to become a mechanical engineer. But then my kid says, always has this passion that she wants to become a robotics engineer. And see. Can, see, being in that space, seeing the challenges you go through, I also sacrificed and entered into mechatronics just to get such knowledge and then help her with that. And it has really helped me. So I don't really base the emphasis on the fact that women are not being given the chance. They have the chance to do everything, but then I think we just need to give them some extra more attention for to, to groom them into that. But then, if, like, like say you give the baby girl a door. If you give her a game, she wouldn't like that because most of her friends are already having doors. So uh, yeah, that is. That, they, they feel like that isn't theirs. <laughs> yes, they feel. Uh, yes, I am. Yeah, most of the time they feel that isn't theirs. Uh huh. And also with with what the first meeting and then I would want to throw more light on that. When 
in every time I go for these seminars or conferences like this, I mostly find out that I'm the first Kufuria Technical University person being in that meeting. <laughs> and it, 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 it's really uh, a problem to me because I, I tried with four friends to organize uh, a Green Tertiary Council, which, but then coming here to the Afro life, there are such small things that are happening that you don't even have any idea on. And talking of climate change and its effect, when you go to uh, the Prim North District, Epinhasing, for instance, a friend of mine, my very best friend, Kokwe Chang, he died because of Galamsi. And with that, you can't, there is a need that you can't do anything about it because you feel like those people doing the, the Galamsi, they are backed by the kings and other stuff. And you can't just stand up to go and tell them that they should stop. And even the youth within that society, they are all into that because that is what is giving them money. And they cannot stop doing that. And the fact is, even my grandmom sold our family land. They could go around to these Chinese people to farm one because he, she said that she cannot do a farm to reach that state to get that money that the Chinese will give her instantly. And it, it really, it really becoming a problem. I entered into entrepreneurship, Go Papa. It's one of my projects that we are trying to uh, inject towards the LDG2 to help uh, like find a way to get food very cheap that maybe they can change. But then. Looking at the long term, I don't really see that becoming or uh, helping to solve that issues. And trying to be in our space, trying to help, like you, I just don't know what to do. I just don't know how to do it. In as much as I'm trying to, yes, mobilize somebody and then get a seminars and maybe if you can get help or get people to come and talk and direct for people with such issues to also get some issues on that. Because, and I think of all the technical university is a university because most of the information we don't have. YCC, I saw uh, a post of them on LinkedIn. That was why I was able to apply and then getting the information about this seminar. And today I asked some of these friends that, have they ever been to a conference, seen a Kofodia technical personnel over there? Or even the technical investors, they still see us that this is a polytechnic or something. But then we started like a Tronis first year in Ghana. So it, and it's a big program. So I think most of these information and other stuff should also be spread out to these technical investors. We are youth now, we are hungry to, and then we want to make policies or change policies that already exist. But I don't think we have the information on that, so I'll be happy to come to that Yeah, that's a very, very good submission. And for information, I know 5K2 people. I've met 5K2 people on my previous project with Morgan Stanley, I work with like, 5K2 people who, I didn't know they even had a megatronics program. And with regards to your sister, you said if you bought your sister the game, you think well, she probably not like it. Because probably she wants to venture into, you want her to venture into robotics, right? Right? Robotics. So in my third year of SHS, I went to a pre girls by the way, I represented Ghana at the World Robots Olympiad in Russia, right? And when you said robotics, it was quite funny. These opportunities, they are there, but they are not there. You have to look for it, you see. And I'm happy that you have a big brother. I, mean, I wish I had a big brother. Like, I wouldn't be suffering like this. <laughs> like, I wouldn't have hassled, certain hassle. I mean, I have great people like Mauto, I have like people who are there to support me and all, but I wish I had a big brother who would have given me more insights, who would have gone in front of me. But I have to do that for my brother, you see. And I'm happy you are doing that, like going to Megatronics so that at least your sister, by the time she gets there, she already have an upper hand. So these opportunities like this, you want to get into robotics. There are so many STEM fields, like so many STEM groups. Joyce is outside, I think. He's from Maker Space. They deal with like robotics. So EV3, NXT, also IoT Labs. There are so many groups in Ghana that are involved in this that can sort of handle that interest that your sister will be in, like interested in to like level up when it comes to those skills. Also, you mentioned that um, you saw this link from YCC in their channel and you applied. The truth is, my experience, I went to Tech 2, right? And there are certain programs like Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Goldman Sachs. If you don't know, if you don't search, you never find. There are so many people who will apply from, let's say, Asheti, like from different schools. But when you end up at Kempinski for three days, you see Tech 1. K2, there are you see some, I'm not gonna lie. Um, Legon, one or two. Umat, one, right? Asherti, 20, 30. 
and you see our schools don't have that um, systems or groups or departments that go and look for opportunities for us so if you don't have to look for it on your own it's, it's already on value you you you'll not be there and you also don't know these programs are there and also when you have friends in different universities like why not that oh my friend is in a chair so she'll be like ah, i think have you heard of this program it's going to happen at this time or maybe you browse and find things that are going on in ghana that's the only way for you to get involved in these things there's a particular page called seo africa i didn't know them till after school or like final year they really put out opportunities about this aside wiki climate and all that they put out opportunities for you to level up your career after school because See, our normal government for years, it has not really equipped us for the outside world when it comes to job markets, especially in tech. You need to take the step outside, else you will not be able to get to the global standard, even the national standard. You will not be able to compete with other people. We have different universities in Ghana, but why is that? It's only a particular university that brings out or churns out like a particular quality of people who get good jobs when they're out. That school is do doing something different. And since we, we don't find ourselves in those schools, we have to also look out for ourselves. We have to be very, very strategic. You mentioned creating the council, right? So you have people, partners on this um, pull-up. You can interact with them, connect, and try and set up something on your own. During my third or fourth year, we my badge in the back behind me were the, were the badge that brought the Google Developer Student Club to tech. Right. I remember I literally led the first session of that. If you don't take those initiatives, nobody will. And I think it's just to go against you because there's so many opportunities going around and you'll be missing them. And you come out of school and realize that, oh my God, like these things are things I could have like grabbed or captured. She gets it. So you have to look out for yourself. You have to be proactive. And I'm really happy that you're looking out for a sister. So you could try and then get her into these kind of programs. Like just, just try all that you can. So that, that's it for me. Okay, my name is not a question. Uh, I just want to use this opportunity to invite all of you to be like uh, active contributors to Wikimedia projects by being part of art and feminism campaigns. I spoke about art and feminism. So um, you can organize um, events in your campuses. Every year it's an all year round program, but majority of the events are in May um, and March. But all of you here, you don't need to be an expert. You can be very new to Wikipedia, and you can organize an event in your campus. We are looking at students, especially young women, because I work with an organization that cares so much about the gender gap and information gap on the internet in general. So um, I just wanted to invite you all. You can get in touch with the organizers if you want to be involved. We provide microfunding between $150 to $300. So you just let me know how you want to organize it and we'll help you out. Thank you. Thank you so much, my panelists, and thank you, audience, for being attentive. It's been very interactive. Um, actually excited about the questions that came and the comments as well. Thank you all so much. So, uh, but I do have something to add. I'll retreat it. Okay, so as uh, Afi was talking, she made mention of the fact that the four years in school is not enough. It's true, it's not enough. Like, if you are going to actually focus and say you're going to rely on the knowledge you gain in the classroom for four years no it's not enough it won't do anything like it won't trust me so join a community on campus learn to volunteer like develop a habit of volunteering because wikimedia actually relies on volunteering like so learn to volunteer learn to give to your community you do not know the number of people you are impacting when you volunteer I remember uh, earlier in the session, you said when you edit on uh, Wikimedia, you are affecting one billion people per month. So please, let's volunteer, let's network. Mr. Oto was very particular on that network. Go around, talk to people. So as we are here, let's take advantage of this opportunity. Network, talk to people. I do not like networking. I'm a very shy person, but I'm doing my best to network. So let's do it. Just go to someone, say, hi, I'm from here. What did you hear? Yeah, did you hear anything? What did you hear? Tell me something. 
something, just, just, just something, just have a conversation, network, volunteer, join a community, and then take it from there. You, would, you don't know where it will take you, but I'm sure it will take you somewhere that you, in the end, you'll be grateful that you actually took that step. So thank you once again, my panelists. It has been a very great session, and I'm grateful, Mr. Otto, for the opportunity to moderate. I am really, really grateful. So thank you so much. Please, we may have our seats. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Normally, they would have said all too soon, but I'm told it's grammatically wrong, so we wouldn't say all too soon. All that I would say is that finally, 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 we are at the end of day one. And very grateful to our wonderful panelists. A few announcements before we leave. Tomorrow is not going to be a talk show. It's going to be a workshop. Tomorrow, whatever you have heard, we are going to practice it. We are going to see what you can do. We are going to see how it can affect, how it can involve to evolve using the open knowledge resources available. So tomorrow is going to be a workshop. Come along with your laptops. We have internet around, everything. Bring your laptops, bring your smartphones. Come along. And then um, let me put this uh, information through. People were selected for scholarships, uh, for scholarship for this program, that they were selected for transportation scholarships. Those who were selected tomorrow, please come along with their email confirmation. They, I'm told the team sent an email confirmation to selected participants. Come along with them. In the course of the, in the program, they would um, give the transportation scholarships to them. And I know that one, they considered 60% females and 40% male. So that next time, you will not say that they don't have money. They can't afford transportation. If they can't transport, we are giving them come. So if you don't come, then it means that women, you have yourself to be blamed. There's a book called The Girls Are Not To Blame. I'm also bringing a new term. 21st century women are to blame. Because if you go through the application list, you realize that less than 40% of them were ma. But this one moved around everywhere. So me, I am saying that tomorrow, women, women, shine me. Please come on. And see, we say tomorrow is workshop. So tomorrow we are going to actually take you through how to do all these things, practically. There will be a few dead people will be taking through trainings, workshops. I, 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 I will talk about it again if you can come around. Then you will be some areas you can even edit life. There will be some current information in terms of our NDCs and in terms of our climate policies. So when you put, as soon as he says it, you look for the reference, then you update Wikipedia content with it. If he doesn't do that, I'll do that myself personally so that we can give you how to do some of these things. So tomorrow, please. We are coming. The time for tomorrow is 9. 9 to 10 is networking and breakfast. So networking, you come, you see, your network is your net worth. Okay? Now, the work is two, the, the, the W-O-R-T-H and then W-E-A-L-T-H, all the two. How they value you will depend on your network. And the money you have at the point also depend on your network. But you're wrong, sick and yeah, then I'm for you and for that. But the uncle is the one who calls our uncle club now, who calls me say now. Now we may say, they will even arrest me, they will think that I'm going to spy on them. So, you see, your network, so put that network now. In the 21st century, the currency we use is not actually money, the currency is network. I hope people like um, tomorrow, um, see, that's a big deal to talk about some of these things. I'll give him some time to talk about networking and how some of us, me, most of the travels that just recently, when um, the US Embassy came around, um, I went to the US Embassy came around, they were doing this conference, full bright and whatever. My network in US recommended me to, so I was there when they sent me a mail that they, they are having a conference for West African teachers, they want to come and talk about climate change. I didn't know <laughs> the the you were you were I you were supposed to get a call never done for. I don't even but then a network invited me to them. Then they went down to me. So me, I was in my somewhere in my in my village on the field when I had that meal. Then quickly I looked at that, I said, okay, this one will be a good opportunity. Let me then I had to somebody recommended me. I didn't send a CV. But they had they had already called for people to send their CV so when they went to uh, to somebody because of recommendation, I didn't even apply one. I didn't apply. I didn't even send my CV. What they looked at was my LinkedIn profile. 
So when I came, they were telling me things about myself I didn't even know. The person who introduced me, I think the public affairs officer, is it? Yeah. They at the US Embassy, and then the guy who introduced me, I didn't even know the things they were saying about me. You know, those guys can say, they have gone through my LinkedIn profile, looked at all my posts and things they were saying. They made me feel big arm about me to have small. So that is it, it's network. Network, network. Now, let me give an example. Confidence, for instance. I just met her. When she came on, she knew, I realized oh, she has potential. So now, do you think that if somebody calls me in Kumasi that, oh, they are running a program in Accra, they want somebody who is enthusiastic and somebody who, is, who has the zeal for this one. Pa, 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 pa. I guess confidence is there. That is that, network. Then when she goes, she will never come home empty-handed. Because the way I feel human being, of a pan in Sakwa. That's it. So let's all network. It's very important because that is the currency we are using now. The 21st century. Let's network. Let's network. I told you, I guess we see another meeting from Mar uh, Mariana from Germany. Just right now. 1.8 million students or whatever in Germany. I guess it's what they do. Then he has he connected me to the police sister in Germany in Berlin. Network. This somebody I guess with at the French conference. Then she just came to me. Ah, I don't know you are How you are passing about? Okay, okay. So let's exchange contact. I didn't even know you could scan WhatsApp to get. That's where I learned that you can WhatsApp. You don't even need to exchange numbers. So you scan, then you get. You don't go ahead. Say you're IT person. <laughs> WhatsApp. Do, 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 give me your number. Give me your. Do, those ones are village things. Yes. So I'll be saying, you say, no, 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 no. Where's your phone? I, Charlie, let me hear you can see me. So she pa, 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 pa. then she put the phone. Pa, pa. My name and everything came. I said, wow, magic. <laughs> and then I learned it. So now look, look, I go to places, I show off. Oh, no, 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 no. Just give me a WhatsApp. Then I'll pa, pa. Uh, yeah, there you are. He said, hey, sign to magic. Sign to you magic. <laughs> so please, network. Please, network is the currency. Don't let Mr. Ma tell you there just like that too. If you don't know about YCC. The ladies I talk to, go to him. How do you want to be part of YCC? YCC is a place with Indians around with a lot of opportunities. Today, I was, some of them were very busy there when I was going to the music. I saw a series of uh, emails YCC has sent around. So, if you follow that and then you meet the requirements, there you are. Don't let me talk, child. Tomorrow, I'll talk more on networking and how it can build you up. So that if you think, oh, me, I'm shy, you, I'm shy. What is shy is I uh, become a village champion. Don't be shy, okay? Don't be shy. Go to somebody. What do you lose when you go and ask sister, what is your name? I want to be your friend. Can we professional network? What is shy about this? Let me end there, and tomorrow we will continue. So to cut the long story short, tomorrow we are coming here. The announcements are two. Please come along with your laptops, your smartphones, or whatever it is that you can use to edit, because we are going to do live edit, and then we take people to um, how to edit, and everything. Maxwell will be around. He's a facilitator. Ruby Dems, hey, Ruby, are you coming tomorrow? She said yes. So Ruby is coming tomorrow. Faiza is there. Wiki Data and everything. Faiza will do that. And then um, our senior most Sadiq too is around. The people are pointing hands. So tomorrow, Sadiq, this, this one is here before all of them. So that if you say you won't come, it's not me I'm telling you. It's them. So tomorrow you are coming, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Musa, Musa, yeah, I think we introduced Musa in the morning, that he was the red form, but, but they say they want to see you tomorrow too. This is not me saying it too. Yes, <laughs> so if only you come, then you have a session for that. So thank you very much. And then, um, I didn't quite remember this one, but to cut a long story short, first announcement, tomorrow we are coming. Second one, they don't have a scholarship, please come along with your confirmatory emails. The team will sort you out with the packet that you have for your scholarship. Somebody say, I mean, I mean, I scholarship, I mean, 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 we talk about the bottles. This one is glass drink. <laughs> so, because of that, we didn't go and buy can drinks. We didn't go and buy plastic bottle drink. We bought glass. So he's there. Please drink something. Cool and chill your system and leave. Thank you very much.
If you have water bottles tomorrow, please bring them. If you have water bottles tomorrow, bring them so that we would minimize on the water. Team member has said. Yeah, open your mouth, please. Tomorrow, I hope you are aware. We have a presentation tomorrow. Yeah, confidence. Yes, you have a, workshop, a training workshop. I, I'm sure the documentary. Yes. Come. Okay. So thank you very much. Any other questions? Please, any other questions? We are all tired. So, uh, in the name of the one internet grid, in the same way we are ending. Amen. It's a, it's a day. Thank you. 